What if heaven and hell aren't physical places, but states of mind? Traditionally, many of us have been taught to view these realms as physical places we might go to after death. But what if that's not the whole story? What if heaven and hell are actually states of mind, experiences shaped by our thoughts, actions, and inner worlds? Plato, one of the most influential philosophers from ancient Greece, offers profound insights into the nature of the soul and the afterlife. In his dialogues, particularly Phaedo and the Republic, Plato explores the idea that the state of one's soul determines their experience after death. He introduces the concept of the immortal soul, which undergoes judgment and purification. In Phaedo, Plato describes how souls that have led a just and virtuous life are rewarded, potentially ascending to a higher, purer realm, while those tainted by injustice and vice face punishment and purification in a lower, more disordered state. This duality reflects Plato's belief in the moral and ethical development of the soul, suggesting that the conditions of the afterlife are closely related to one's inner moral state, rather than being purely physical locations. Homer's epic, The Odyssey, provides another perspective on the afterlife in ancient Greek thought. In Book 11, Odysseus ventures into the underworld and encounters the spirits of the dead. The experiences of these spirits vary significantly, reflecting aspects of their past lives. For example, Achilles, once the greatest of warriors, expresses profound regret, stating that he would rather be a living servant than a dead hero, indicating his discontent and sorrow despite his heroic past. Conversely, figures like Agamemnon recount their tragic fates, their narratives filled with bitterness and unresolved conflicts. This depiction underscores the idea that the nature of one's experiences in the afterlife is closely tied to their actions and circumstances during life, suggesting that ancient Greek literature often reflects on the internal states and moral conditions of individuals, rather than presenting a binary heaven and hell. In some Eastern religions like Hinduism, the concept of karma plays a central role in determining the course of an individual's life and future incarnations. Karma refers to the sum of a person's actions and their ethical consequences, which influence one's fate in this life and in future lives. According to Hindu belief, good actions and a virtuous state of mind generate positive karma, leading to favorable circumstances in future births, while negative actions and a harmful state of mind produce negative karma resulting in suffering and challenges in subsequent lives. This cycle of action and consequence is integral to the process of samsara, the continuous cycle of birth, death, and rebirth. The ultimate goal in Hinduism is to achieve moksha, or liberation from samsara, which is attained through self-realization, ethical living, and spiritual practices that purify the mind and soul. Buddhism offers a profound perspective on the nature of existence, and the mind through the concepts of nirvana and samsara. Samsara represents the cycle of birth, death, and rebirth, characterized by suffering and dissatisfaction due to attachment, desire, and ignorance. This cycle is perpetuated by one's mental states and actions, which are driven by karma. In contrast, nirvana is the state of ultimate enlightenment and liberation from samsara achieved by extinguishing the fires of greed, hatred, and delusion. Attaining nirvana involves a deep transformation of the mind, cultivated through practices such as mindfulness, meditation, and ethical conduct. Enlightenment is seen as a profound shift in consciousness, where one experiences a state of inner peace, wisdom, and freedom from suffering. In Buddhism, the journey toward nirvana emphasizes the importance of mental states and the cultivation of positive qualities like compassion, mindfulness, and insight. Origin of Alexandria, an early Christian theologian and philosopher, presented a unique perspective on the nature of hell. He posited that hell is not a physical location of eternal torment, but rather a state of separation from God. In his writings, particularly in De Principiis, Origen argued that the suffering of hell arises from the soul's alienation from the divine presence. He believed that this separation is the result of one's own choices and actions, reflecting a condition of the soul rather than a geographical place. Origen's view emphasizes the transformative potential of the soul, suggesting that the ultimate the desert fathers were early Christian hermits, ascetics, 
and monks who lived primarily in the deserts of Egypt, Syria, and Palestine, starting in the 3rd century AD. They sought to live lives of solitude, prayer, and asceticism, aiming to achieve spiritual purity and closeness to God. For the Desert Fathers, heaven and hell were not merely future realities, but present spiritual conditions experienced in life. They believed that one's state of mind and spiritual discipline could bring about a foretaste of heaven or hell on earth. Through practices such as fasting, prayer, and contemplation, they sought to overcome the passions and sins that separated them from God, thereby experiencing a form of heavenly peace. Conversely, they saw the torment of hell in the inner turmoil and suffering caused by sin and disconnection from God. Their teachings highlight the importance of the inner spiritual life and the belief that one's relationship with God determines their experience of heaven or hell. Dante Alighieri's Divine Comedy is indeed a masterpiece of medieval literature that offers profound insights into the medieval Christian worldview. The poem follows Dante's journey through hell, purgatory, and paradise but it is widely interpreted as an allegory of the soul's journey towards God. Each realm in the poem represents different aspects of the human condition and spiritual growth, with hell symbolizing the consequences of sin, purgatory representing the purification of the soul, and paradise depicting the ultimate union with God. The allegorical nature of Dante's work is evident in how the physical landscapes and encounters with various figures represent moral and spiritual truths. For example, Dante's descent into hell can be seen as a metaphor for the soul's recognition and repentance of its sins, while his ascent through purgatory symbolizes the soul's purification and preparation for heavenly bliss. By presenting these concepts in a vivid narrative form, Dante invites readers to contemplate their own spiritual journeys and relationship with God. In the mystical tradition of Christianity, exemplified by figures like Meister Eckhart, there's a strong emphasis on experiencing God directly through inner contemplation and spiritual practices. Meister Eckhart, a German theologian and mystic, taught that heaven is not a place to be reached in the afterlife, but a state of being that can be realized within oneself. He believed that God is not an external entity, but an internal experience, and that by emptying oneself of all distractions and attachments, one can experience a profound union with the divine. This perspective highlights the idea that the journey towards God is ultimately a journey towards self-discovery and inner transformation. In modern times, the concept of heaven and hell has indeed been examined through psychological lenses, offering intriguing insights into the human psyche. Carl Jung, a renowned Swiss psychiatrist and psychoanalyst, introduced the idea of the collective unconscious, a deeper layer of the unconscious mind shared by all individuals containing archetypes or universal symbols. Jung suggested that heaven and hell can be seen as archetypal states of the psyche, representing aspects of the collective unconscious. Heaven may symbolize a state of harmony, wholeness, and spiritual fulfillment, while hell may symbolize inner turmoil, fragmentation, and existential angst. According to Jung, these archetypal images reflect deep-seated human experiences and aspirations providing a framework for understanding the psychological dimensions of heaven and hell. Sigmund Freud, the founder of psychoanalysis, did offer insights into the psychological dimensions of religious experiences, including concepts related to heaven and hell. Freud viewed religion as a projection of human wishes and desires, particularly the longing for a protective father figure. He suggested that religious experiences, including beliefs in heaven and hell, are manifestations of inner psychological states, serving as coping mechanisms for the anxieties and uncertainties of life. While Freud did not provide a detailed analysis of heaven and hell specifically, his broader theories shed light on how these concepts can be understood as expressions of deeper psychological needs and conflicts within the individual and society. In contemporary spirituality, particularly within New Age thought, there is a unique interpretation of heaven and hell as vibrations or frequencies of consciousness. According to this perspective, heaven is not considered a physical place, but a state of higher consciousness characterized by love, peace, and spiritual awareness. Conversely, hell is viewed as a state of lower consciousness dominated by fear, negativity, and ignorance. Proponents of this view believe that individuals can raise their vibrational frequency through spiritual practices, such as meditation, positive thinking, and energy healing, thereby transcending lower states of consciousness 
and aligning with higher, more heavenly realms of existence. This interpretation emphasizes personal empowerment and the belief that individuals have the ability to shape their own spiritual reality through their thoughts, beliefs, and actions. Mindfulness and meditation practices have indeed become increasingly popular in contemporary spirituality as ways to achieve inner peace and spiritual growth. These practices are often viewed as methods to experience a form of heaven on earth by cultivating a state of present moment awareness and inner tranquility. By quieting the mind and focusing on the present moment, individuals can transcend their worries, fears, and ego-driven desires, leading to a sense of peace and interconnectedness with the universe. In this context, heaven is not seen as a distant afterlife destination, but as a tangible experience of inner harmony and spiritual fulfillment that can be cultivated in the here and now. Mindfulness and meditation are seen as tools for transforming one's consciousness and experiencing a deeper, more meaningful connection to the divine or spiritual essence of existence. Neuroscience has indeed provided fascinating insights into how brain activity and states of mind influence our perceptions of happiness and suffering. Studies have shown that specific brain regions, such as the prefrontal cortex and limbic system, play crucial roles in regulating emotions and processing experiences related to pleasure and pain. For instance, the release of neurotransmitters like dopamine is associated with feelings of happiness, while the activation of the amygdala is linked to fear and anxiety. Neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to reorganize itself in response to experiences, suggests that our thoughts and behaviors can shape the neural pathways associated with happiness and suffering. This understanding highlights the complex interplay between brain function and subjective experiences of well-being and distress, offering insights into the neural mechanisms underlying our emotional states. Quantum physics has indeed sparked speculative ideas about consciousness and its role in creating our perceived reality. Some interpretations of quantum mechanics suggest that the act of observation or measurement can influence the behavior of subatomic particles, leading to the notion that consciousness may play a fundamental role in shaping the physical world. This idea has led to hypotheses proposing that consciousness is not solely generated by the brain, but may exist independently, with the brain acting as a receiver or conduit for conscious experiences. While these ideas remain highly speculative and controversial, they raise intriguing questions about the nature of consciousness, its relationship to the physical world, and the potential implications for our understanding of reality and human existence. In comparing ancient and modern views on heaven and hell, we observe a significant evolution in understanding. Ancient perspectives, deeply rooted in religious and philosophical traditions, often portrayed heaven and hell as literal places or states of existence in the afterlife. While some ancient thinkers, such as certain Gnostics or mystics, interpreted these concepts as metaphorical or states experienced in the present life, mainstream views typically viewed them as literal destinations. These ancient beliefs were closely tied to moral and ethical frameworks, suggesting that one's actions in life determined their fate in the afterlife. Modern interpretations, influenced by scientific and psychological insights, tend to view heaven and hell more metaphorically as states of consciousness or psychological experiences. This shift reflects a broader trend towards secularism and a greater emphasis on individual spirituality and personal growth. Modern perspectives often emphasize the internal and subjective nature of these concepts, highlighting the role of personal beliefs and experiences in shaping one's understanding of heaven and hell. Regardless of our religious or philosophical background, we all grapple with questions of meaning, purpose, and the nature of existence. Whether we conceive of heaven and hell as literal destinations or metaphorical constructs, what remains clear is that our internal states have a profound impact on our quality of life and our relationships with others. Perhaps heaven and hell are not just external realities, but internal states of being that we navigate in our daily lives. We encourage you to share your thoughts and beliefs on heaven and hell in the comments below. How do you interpret these concepts? And how do they influence your understanding of the world around you?